Do you design by adding each and every blurb or card in Divi one by one? Well, <laughs> I got news for you because this is the wrong way of designing your layouts in Divi. In this video, I want to show you an amazing way that is both scalable, much easier, and will save you a lot of time. Let's dive in and let me show you how to design your layouts using blurbs in a much more professional way. Let's dive in. This video is going to help you become a much better Divi designer. So in this example, we're going to be using Divi 5 and I'll be showing you how to use advanced custom fields to enhance your design workflows. And this tip alone will enable you to design scalable websites. All right, so we are going to be using Divi 5. So let's jump in and let me show you what a typical beginner designer would do. So for this example, I'm gonna be using blurbs. So let's go ahead and add our column structure. So I'm going to go in and add a single column. In here, we're going to add a blurb. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. All right, so I'm going to do a few adjustments here just to make sure that my design uh, looks much better. First of all, I'm going to center this text right here. So let's head over to design. Then I'm going to go to text and center. So now that my text is centered, over here on the image, I also want to go in and add my image. So I would come over here, go to image and icon, and I can just go in and add my image. So I'm going to go with this one here from my media library. And then all the way down here, I want to click on upload image. Okay, so far so good. The next thing I'm going to do is just to make sure that this fills the whole space. So let's head over to design and we're going to go to sizing and just make sure that this is set to 100%. Okay, so this is going to help us with the responsiveness. All right, so now that I have this all set, if I wanted to add another blurb on this website for a different service, so let's call this service one, okay, so that uh, at least we know what we're doing here. So let's say this is service one. So I'm just going to enter that. So now let's say we want to enter service number two. This is what a beginner designer would do. They would come over here, click on, this gear icon, and then duplicate this a few times. Okay, so now we have our services. So all you have to do now is to go into this one here, change this from service one to service two, and then change this one here to service three. And then finally, you'd go in there and start changing your images. So for example, you come over here, change this image, upload image, go to the second one, and change this image as well. So I'm gonna choose this one, upload image. So you can see now that uh, we have our services, but um, what happens now is perhaps maybe we want to add a bit of a design to our services. So now let's head over to the first one. So let's say I wanna go in here, and first of all, I wanna give this a background color. So let's go in and for the sake of this design, we're just going to add something quite light like that. And we may also want to go into our design here and add some padding. So I'm going to go to spacing and let's just add a padding of, let's say, let's try to rem and see what happens. Okay. So we're going to allow this to all the size. Okay. So we've got a bit of a color there. In fact, let me make it a bit lighter. It's a bit too much there. All right, just very subtle. Okay, so if now we want to add this style to the rest of the services, you can see now how it's starting to get complicated. So that means I would need to come over here, copy the styles, and then I'd come over here, paste module style, right? I'll do the same over here, right click, Paste module style, oh, blurb style, sorry. Okay, now what we what if we have, let's say this blurb on several places on our website, then we have a problem, but I'm sure you can say, oh, Mac, why don't we save this as a preset? And that's true, we can save it as a preset and then we can just update that preset and that will just uh, make sure that all the instances of this service is updated across the whole website but we still have to go in and manually add all our content. 
So if you wanted to add service four, for example, uh, we could perhaps maybe come over here and duplicate this, go to service four, start typing all our information in here. And that takes a very long time. Now, let me show you the alternative method, which I think is more of a professional workflow. And this will definitely work much, much better for your website. Now, before we continue, by the way, uh, this video is brought to you by ZipWP. Now, ZipWP is awesome because you can build WordPress websites super fast. In seconds, you can have a pretty much a WordPress website. And by the way, this tutorial, in fact, is coming from a ZipWP because I have all my websites in here. And what I do is I when I test different types of websites, I just create a brand new website, install my software, test it and see if it's working. So you may want to use this as part of your workflow as a freelancer or even as a design agency. So ZipWP, pretty awesome. Link to that is in the video description below. All right, so let's continue with our tutorial here. So let's um, add a new section altogether because we want to start this design from scratch. So we're going to go for regular like that. And let's drag this to the top. Okay, because I don't want to keep scrolling while I'm designing here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose our first uh, column here. So what we're going to do different in this example is we are first of all going to save this. Oops. I'm going to come here and save. And we are now going to go to our website here and install a plugin, which is very important. Now, this plugin used to be called Advanced Custom Fields, but it has now changed to Secure Custom Fields. So to install it, you want to come over here to Plugins and then click on Add New Plugin. So if you search for advanced custom fields, ACF, you're going to notice that we now have SCF. Okay. There's a bit of a drama between WordPress and uh, what's the other company? WP engine. So I'm not going to get into that. Let's go in because this is the tool that we need to use for this example. Anyway, so I've already gone ahead and installed it. And just remember that it's called secure custom fields now. Okay, I've already gone ahead and installed it and activated it. And the entry is over here on my left panel. So the first thing we need to do is to come over here to post types. So remember, uh, these items we're adding onto our website here are services. So we might as well call our post type services. So let's go ahead and click on add new post type. So here we're going to call it services. And on the singular here, it's going to be service. In fact, we might as well go in and add a capital S here because that's what I did on the first one. All right, so pretty much we're good to go. Make sure that your post type key is also named service. And then go ahead and save. All right, so now that I've saved this, we're now going to need the contents for the post type. So if you come over here now to field groups, so for this example here, it's pretty straightforward because for our image, we can use our um, featured image. And for our normal text, you can just go into our normal body text as our service. So pretty much we're good. But in future advanced videos, I'll be showing you how to even take this to the next level. So, so far, we've got our, our custom field here. And you're going to notice that it's been added now over here and it's now called services. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click and add a new service because this is where now we're starting to add our services manually. So let's call this service A so that we can uh, distinguish these from the other ones that we uh, we did. All right, so this is going to be service A. And then over here, I need to enter the text that goes with it, the description. The next thing we need to do now is to add our image. So I'm going to come over here, set featured image. And let's say this is our first image. We are going to set our featured image and then publish. Okay. So that's service A. So you may be thinking, well, if we view the service, you know, what does it look like? And pretty much it doesn't look very good. That's because it's, it has not been customized. It has not been designed. So let me show you how we design this now. So I'm going to keep this open. We're going to come over here. And let's add our blurb. Here it is. So 
we are now going to start with um, the title here so let's uh, let's just make sure everything is centered okay great so now that everything is centered we need now to use dynamic data okay so let me show you what I mean so we're gonna start off here with our image so let's delete this because we don't need that we're gonna click on this little icon here and we're gonna set this to featured image this is very very important okay make sure it's set to featured image next we also need to go to our dynamic titles here so let's head over to our text so here you can see we're gonna click the dynamic thing again and I'm gonna go with page or archive title I'm not gonna bother with before and after click on apply next I'm also going to do the same thing over here on the description so click over here and uh, we are going to set this to accept okay uh, page accept yes click on apply okay so so far so good now I have uh, everything all set if I need to I may go in and make some uh, some changes to my design but for now let's just save this if we come to our services here you're going to notice that we have service A and service B okay that's great now hold that thought now let's have a let's head over now to our front page so it is very tempting to come over here and you know start adding all your your services and as you can see here it doesn't work because I've just added a brand new blurb and it doesn't have any dynamic data so for this to work here's what you need to do you need to now get rid of pretty much everything here click on this plus button so what we need here is a blog okay I know you'll be thinking well why what does a blog got to do with our services well <laughs> let me show you something pretty cool okay so now that we have our blog the next thing we're gonna do is to head over here to our settings now over here on our settings if you click on this drop down you notice that we have content here okay we have content type so right now it's pulling in our blog posts but remember we have our services in here because we created this as a custom post type in fact it's not showing yet let me just refresh this page so I'm gonna come over here okay so you want to make sure you refresh just in case it hasn't uh, gone through all the content all the cache all right so if I click on this drop down you're going to notice now that we have services okay that's the custom post type that we created and right away you can see now it's pulling service B and it's pulling service A so the next step now is just to quickly tweak this and just customize it to make it look awesome so first of all you can define how many you want to have so let's say I want to have three so you can see it's really uh, it's going to update in real time here I can now come over here to design layout now I want to make sure that this is in a grid because that is how we have our design over here on the bottom so now that we have this we have now the power to go in and customize it so let's say for example we want to center things but before we center you can see here that we have quite a bit of content here we don't want to have all these excepts so I'm gonna come over here to elements and make sure I remove the date and I also need to remove the author okay we don't need the categories and the author all right so now we are pretty close to what we have here on the bottom let's head over to design and we want to center this text so I'm gonna come over here center it so it's closer now to what we have here on the bottom so you can further customize this now let's say you want to add some uh, borders you can just come over here and let's say you want to add one rem on your border you can see now it's been updated if I want to add a background color I can also go in and add a background just like what I've done here so you may be thinking well how is this method better than the method here on the bottom now let me show you I'm gonna save this so here's the thing I'm gonna come over here now 
I'm going to add another service and this time it's going to be service C. So all I need to do to add my services now, I don't need to go in and add a blurb every single time. All I need to do is to come over here and let's call this service C like that. And then over here, I'm going to paste my content on the service. I can set my featured image. I think I can go with this one now because I've used the other two. Set featured image. I'm going to hit publish. Okay. So now that I've published, here's where the magic happens. If I now come over here to the front of my website, in fact, let's save and let's do a quick preview. This should now come on there. You see that? Now we have service C added. So remember, when we started this, I said, if you wanted to change the design of a blurb and you want the design to go across the whole website, you would need to go in and make all these changes to every single one of them or you'd use presets and so on. But with this method that I'm showing you now, it's much, much easier. Let me show you. Let's go back in here. So I'm going to say edit with DV. And then we want the top one. So I can just go in to our module settings. And now I can go, let's say, to my background and I can say grid background color. There we go. Can you see how they've all updated, right? This is much, much faster. And wherever we have this set up on our website, it's going to apply across the whole website. So this is going to save you a lot of time when it comes to adding your services on your website. Now, this does not only apply to services, by the way. Custom post types can be used pretty much everywhere. Now, I have a upcoming course. If you want to learn how to design websites the professional way, uh, the faster way, then you need to go to the link I've provided in the video description below. Check it out and sign up for the course. And um, I will be releasing it very, very soon. So as you can see here, this is uh, pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.